Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in today. My name is McCade Marshall and this is Word of the Week. Word of the Week is a short video I shoot every single week for my readers and viewers, so thank you for tuning in today. At the end of this video, if you enjoy this message, I encourage you to share it with family, with friends, with loved ones and coworkers. And you can do that by copying the link to this video and pasting it into your email and also onto Facebook, Twitter, and all your favorite social media sites. So make sure to share the good news at the end of this message. Also, I have a YouTube channel at youtube.com that you can subscribe to for all my latest videos. And the channel's just my name, McCade Marshall. And you can subscribe to receive these emails in your inbox every single Sunday evening. If you'll just go to my website, mccademarshall.com, click on the Word of the Weeks tab, fill out the form there, I'd be more than happy to add you to my emailing list. So take that out at the end of this message. All right, well, the word of the week for this week is, His grace is sufficient for me. In life, we are all going to have different struggles we must deal with. At some point, we all have to battle a temptation, fight an illness, or endure a lengthy trial. Sometimes there is no way around the difficulties we are going to go through. However, the good news today is that we are never alone, no matter what we are facing. God promises never to abandon us when he tells Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of your enemies. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. The life God has called you to is one that requires valor. It requires strength and courage. You are not called to live the easy life. Instead, you are called to live a life of victory, one that is characterized by overcoming obstacles and achieving success through Jesus Christ. What you were created and designed to do cannot be achieved without God's help. Jesus tells us in John 15 verse 5, Yes, I am the vine you are the branches. Those who remain in them and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Friends, it is impossible to fulfill your purpose in life without Jesus Christ. Jesus is the center of all creation. He is the reason we live. It is because of God's grace we can live for him. One of the most notable followers of God in the scriptures is the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul wrote over half of the New Testament. You might think a man of such high standing before God would certainly have spiritual perks and divine favor unlike other people we read about in the Bible. However, the Apostle Paul actually had it much harder than most. God revealed himself in powerful ways to Paul, and yet Paul was frequently persecuted, suffered great hardships, and even had a tormenting spirit he had to put up with. The Apostle Paul tells the church in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 6 through 9, Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain so that no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. 
Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. How many of us would like to see more of God's power in our lives? All of us, of course. However, when we ask for something great, like more of God's power, we should consider what this might require of us. In order to see more of Christ's power at rest on our lives, we must humble ourselves. The Apostle Paul understood this spiritual principle quite well. He tells us he was actually tormented by a messenger of Satan. He calls this tormenting spirit a thorn in the flesh. If you think of having a thorn jabbed into your skin, you might think of pain and discomfort. The first thing you want to do when you get a thorn or a splinter in your skin is pull that piece of sharp wood out. A thorn in the flesh is uncomfortable. It hurts just enough to keep you unnerved. This is what Paul had to deal with while preaching the gospel. He even asked God three times to remove this tormenting spirit from his life. But God told Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Today, I believe God wants us to learn how to be content no matter what position we are in. If there is an area of discomfort in your life, declare God's promise to help us through the difficulty. Say, His grace is sufficient for me. When you acknowledge that God's grace is more than enough to help you reach the other side of the battle, supernatural power from heaven goes to work to begin moving the wrong things out of the way and bring the right things across your path. I believe even right now, God's grace is flooding your mind, will, and emotions to help you overcome a struggle, an addiction, or an illness you have been fighting. I believe sometimes God wants us to first acknowledge that He is more than enough for all we need before He allows us to experience the breakthrough that we obviously need. Jesus tells us to seek God's kingdom first. One way we seek God's kingdom first is by coming into agreement with the truth that God's grace is sufficient. His grace is more than enough to help us through. Maybe right now you are going through a divorce, a legal battle, a physical illness, or a financial loss. You might be praying for God to just get me out of here. It is natural and even understandable to want to just run the other way when we are in an intense battle or going through an incredibly hard time. However, I believe God wants to speak to your heart today. He is saying, my grace is sufficient for you. Come into agreement with God. Pray and declare to the Lord, your grace is sufficient for me. In your natural mind, your own reasoning and understanding, you might not fully believe you can handle what you are going through. The good news is, you are not dependent on you. You are dependent on God and what He says. You have all you need to get you to the other side of the hardship and the heartache. God loves you too much to abandon you and leave you shipwrecked. There are new chapters, new seasons of victory straight ahead. 
Know today his grace is sufficient for you. Well, I want to pray over you really quick that you just get this message deep into your spirit that his grace is sufficient for me. And Jesus has made a way for us to be in right relationship with God and to do what he has called each and every one of us to do in our lives. And when we're going through the heat, the battle, the suffering, God is right there with us. He never abandons us, but he gives us the grace to work through it and to come out stronger. So I just want to pray over you really quick that you'd get this message deep into your spirit. So wherever you are, if you want to bow your head, close your eyes and listen along, as I pray over this message. Father God, thank you so much for everyone listening and watching right now. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Father, you tell us through your word and by your spirit that your grace is more than enough. The enabling you have given us is more than enough for us to conquer our enemies, for us to overcome mountains, for us to defeat giants, our faith is more powerful than all of that. Whether we're battling a sickness, an illness, a disease, a financial battle, an issue at home, a relationship, a problem at work, Father, your grace is sufficient. So I pray, Father, for the breakthrough, for the healing, for the revelation, Father, in each and every one of our lives, that you are moving forward, that the battle is not ours, but the battle is the Lord. So thank you in advance for the victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to tell you the first step to experiencing more victory, to having an all-sufficient grace from God, is by first having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And Jesus came some 2,000 years ago. He died on the cross by way of crucifixion to pay the price of a sinner's death. He made atonement for our sins so that we could be made right with God and spend eternity with Him. So if you've never received the free gift of Christ's salvation, would you just pray with me this prayer and invite Jesus to come into your heart and be Lord of your life. So wherever you are, if you just want to bow your head, close your eyes, and repeat after me this prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming to die on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins, come into my heart, I make you my Lord and Savior, amen. Well, if you prayed that simple prayer, the Bible says that you have been spiritually born again and that the Holy Spirit has been deposited into your heart as a guarantee that you belong to him. So welcome to the family of God. And the next step in your faith journey is to get involved in a good Bible-based church and Christian community and let people encourage you along in your faith. And be water baptized as a public profession of your faith in Jesus. The baptism is symbolic of dying to your old way of life and to yourself and being raised and washed new and made new in Christ. You're a new creation in Christ. So be water baptized as a public profession of your faith. And read the Bible every day. The Bible is the Word of God. It's the foundation of our faith, and it's how we become stronger and stronger in our knowledge of God, and we learn how to walk in the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit through Christ. So read the Bible every day, and pray and talk to God. You can talk to God any time of day, morning, evening, at work, at home, at school, while you're driving. You can pray anytime, anywhere. God wants to develop that personal relationship with you. So begin to develop an active prayer life with the Lord. And make sure to tell someone that you gave your life to Christ. Um, and also, you can tell a, a pastor, you can tell maybe a friend you know is a Christian, or someone at work, and let them encourage you along in your faith. And also, I have a website with a lot of great resources that you can check out as well. And my website is just my name, McCadeMarshall.com. And on McCadeMarshall.com, there's other Word of the Week videos just like this one that you can watch. If you'll click on that Word of the Weeks tab, uh, 
scroll through those videos. There's over 100 videos you can watch. I promise you any of those messages will encourage you and hopefully you'll learn something new. So make sure to check out the other Word of the Week videos. And also I'm a writer and I mail out newsletters for free every three months to my subscribers. So if you're not on my mailing list, click on that newsletters tab, fill out the form there. I'd be happy to add you to my list and mail you my latest newsletter. And also I've authored a few books that you can order on my website. And the latest book I wrote is called Five Finding Your Keys. And Finding Your Keys has 12 different keys or spiritual truths that when you apply these truths to your life, it unlocks the supernatural power of God in your life. So if you don't have Finding Your Keys, make sure to check that book out. And another book I wrote is called Breathe. And Breathe is all about God breathing new life into your God-given dreams and destiny. So it's a great book to resuscitate the desires and dreams in your heart that are from the Lord. And also the first book I wrote that's on my website is called Tasting the Goodness of God. And Tasting the Goodness of God is a 31-day daily devotional I wrote to help you learn how to spend time with God each and every day. So if you don't have Finding Your Keys or Breathe or Tasting the Goodness of God, I encourage you to order those books. They also make great gifts. I'd be more than happy to sign those books. I can personalize them for you and ship them to you. All right, well, in closing... I just want to declare a special blessing over you. I declare you're experiencing new hope today. As you walk through the trials of life, you are not alone. Because you have God by your side, I believe you're not only going to endure the hardship, but you're going to soar to new heights by His grace. You have more than you will ever need to fulfill your purpose and walk fully into your destiny. Through Christ's Spirit, you can and are going to overcome any forces of darkness that come your way. With God's help, there is nothing you cannot accomplish in Jesus' name. Well, I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless you.